On behalf of the Badminton Pan-American Confederation, we warmly welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Richard Wong, and it's my pleasure to be today's moderator. In this session, we're pleased to have one of the most important references of badminton in France. I'm referring to Professor Thomas Adam from France, who today will talk about an important topic, basics in doubles and experience in a youth national center in France. Before handing over to our guest, please allow me to tell you a little bit about Professor Adam. He has four years head coach in a youth regional center in Strasbourg with 13 to 16 year old players. And since 2013, the head coach in a youth national center in Strasbourg with 16 to 21 year old players, specialized with doubles players since 2016. Players often get medals and titles in U19 European Championships. A big part of, of them is going between 18 and 21 years old in the Senior National Center in Paris. Good night, Professor Adam, and welcome to our program. Thank you for joining us and receiving, from, receiving us from your home in France. We invite you to take control and share your screen. Good morning, everyone. First, it's an honor and to be here and, and being able to share my experience with you, especially in everything regarding doubles. I'm a specialist in doubles uh, from a, a, some years ago with the restructuration of badminton in France. And we're gonna see this. I'm a professor of sports since 2008 he was the Minister of Sports, the one who hired me and uh, put me in the French Badminton Federation. I started in, in 2008 with a, a pole sport or with the uh, best players of the regions between 13 and 16 years of age. Then I went to the uh, pole France until now. In, there we have athletes between 16 and 21 years of age. Before uh, working and there we worked with singles and doubles and then we specialized in um, Bordeaux for in Bordeaux for singles and in Strasbourg for doubles. In order to put what we're doing in context regarding the elements of the Federation as well as the different tools that we have available for the preparation of athletes of all ages and in the end we're gonna talk about the way that we apply these four doubles especially in Strasbourg some of you have uh, a scene uh, of French players in the Federation and I, I talk about this because we're going to talk about the tools that we've used. We, I'm going to present some of the tools of the uh, Federation. We have T. Pilet who has done a presentation about this topic as well and several others that uh, I haven't mentioned. But these are the most recent and are the ones that uh, are still in mind for us. Regarding uh, doubles, we're gonna talk about the common elements on the three disciplines. Well. I couldn't get into too much detail because that would take uh, much more time. And then we're going to talk about each of the disciplines. Regarding the context of the organization in France, we have the elite and senior uh, section. We have this for singles and doubles. In singles, we have several athletes that are really advanced for their level. Then we have two oh, Paul France relay. 
this is uh, focused on single and doubles in single in Bordeaux and uh, Strasbourg in doubles then we have nine pole spars between 16 between 13 and 16 uh, years of age then we have the Avenir clubs this is for athletes between 9 and 13 and we uh, try to uh, provide enough quality of training so they can go to the uh, professional level now my philosophy on the uh, trainings we are on a tactical uh, combat from uh, the get-go and it has a lot to do with performance and the challenge is to improve in every aspect in order to win in this combat we have the a uh, mental part the technical part tactical part we also have a uh, psychological profiles the uh, medical part and, and the uh, trainings and we uh, try to extract the best performance possible now our uh, way to work and exercise i think is the same as in uh, every nation as far as we've been able to see the most important thing is the variation to have a proper adaptation especially they need to respond to the objective that we have set in order to oh, be able to focus on these variables now the dimensions of the performance we focused on the uh, central part well we're gonna see uh, what's specific for doubles later we have the a uh, tactical combat we have the physical dimension the the quality the prevention and hygiene we want to develop these uh, specifically so the physical dimension it's uh, the quality of the sport the uh, hygiene and also of prevention this is uh, what we need to do in order to be able to train uh, two times a day or more then the mental and dimension we need to be on a combative uh, status and this is what is behind every stroke the mental dimension and then we also train the body for the uh, technique and i apologize for the quality of the image but i wanted to show this this is in our center in strasbourg this is a classic example in this type of situation we can uh, work on the performance and we we have a better uh, cooperation we have more uh, speed and all of this is based in uh, several parameters mental physical and psychological uh, parameters and these are the uh, federal orientations we see on the red part that it says to win and the combat and we have three main pillars the technical and tactical part to play within rhythm and to be able to destabilize the uh, rivals. Here we have the first uh, book of the OTHN and here we uh, see the journey of these athletes and how do we uh, determine the priorities, low, medium and high. And if we uh, look closely for uh, 16 to 19, we have the high priorities that are the uh, stroke uh, for a double, 
the uh, finger power or the uh, handling of the uh, racket. We're gonna see a more uh, of this in detail when we see the strokes. Then here we've uh, created a booklet about a physical preparation and we're gonna review this later as well. Well, this is a quick summary of what we need to do. These are the uh, priorities that you need to know by age nine, especially for a double. Okay, we'll uh, gonna get back to the specificities of the doubles games. As I was saying, this is a strategic and game. We uh, need to score a point and as we're gonna see e later something and determining is the first stroke and we're gonna see how can we e strike to destabilize and we're going to work on the fixation we also need to uh, displace in a rhythm with a uh, timing and we also need to have some footwork at the moment of the uh, strike and we're gonna see what's different between singles games and doubles games when we uh, train before, we uh, did one training for singles and doubles, and we've realized that there are very specific things for doubles, and we've uh, modified the trainings accordingly. We have the uh, specific characteristics for the doubles games, we have the uh, mental part, two uh, players, the physical part, which are the uh, strokes uh, being hit at 100%. This means that they need to develop strength, uh, power, and uh, they need to prevent any back injuries. Now regarding the uh, movement along the court, we need to uh, do some footwork I need to know where uh, do I need to move, how can I move, and how can I uh, help my partner with uh, my movement. Then we're going to uh, talk about specific uh, strokes. We have the uh, strokes that are very close to the net and, and the service as well. We have some uh, intentions one is to destabilize we want to destabilize a team and here I am put two examples we have a player that is in the back of the court and here if we uh, review the defending position we have a, a free and defense We also need uh, planning. We have an annual uh, planification. This is done accordingly to the tournaments that we're going to participate in. We have senior uh, competitions for athletes from 16 to 21 and also junior uh, competitions. Based on these competitions, because there are uh, several of them along the year, we can adapt to uh, improve the quality. If we have a four, we can have a quick cycle and have a six week period for resting. And we can have a specific periods according to the uh, performance uh, goals. We have also uh, weekly cycles 
in each of these uh, weeks we uh, want to work uh, on very diverse uh, topics and depending on the quality that we want to keep or achieve now this uh, focus that is specific for doubles are the intentions of the game then the notions of the zones of the court the uh, mental dimension and the physical dimension we're gonna start with the intentions in the game and the uh, use of uh, force this is very favorable neutral and unfavorable for example if I have a stroke from the LS left side well depending how close uh, the athlete it is to the net I can see how favorable it is when it's very favorable we can say that this is gonna go to an area where we're going to lose uh, a point or we can improve and what I want is to create some stabilization or create a neutralization or create an empty space where I can use uh, the strength that I have and something that is not very favorable uh, for us well we can uh, try to use it to destabilize and here are some examples for example, here I'm very close to the net. So I may uh, try to destabilize to obtain a point. If I'm on a more neutral position, then I can take the uh, shuttle closer uh, to the net. And if it's uh, around here then I would like to build in order to get a uh, closer even closer to the net so the athlete needs to be very uh, familiarized with these elements of the game and so uh, he can uh, do well in every situation if it's favorable neutral or unfavorable he may try to strike to take it to the back part of the co of the court without uh, being in too much exposure then he can also try to obtain an advantage but if we are in an unfavorable uh, situation we can uh, try to block the uh, strikes of the uh, rival to go to a favorable uh, situation and if we are in a position like number six well i can try to send the uh, shuttle to the back part and try to uh, save my life so to speak and move on to a more favorable uh, position if we are, if we are in uh, these uh, game situations we need to learn to go from one stroke to the other for example if i'm going to strike i need to take it to the middle of the court if i'm taller or shorter let's say i'm a lefty or a righty then i need to think how to do this strike so it's favorable for me I can uh, build here because I'm in the uh, back part of the court. Maybe here I have an opportunity to have a favorable uh, movement. There's also general rules when you are in the middle of the court. You can take the shuttle to not be uh, too close to the net and not be too exposed. Or maybe I can put pressure on my opponent so I can destabilize him. For example, here I can maintain the attack and if I can take the net, 
I can take this uh, position to uh, complete uh, the play or I'm going to try to block the tra trajectory of the shuttle as um, good as I can. And what I was saying before is that we can work on the uh, physical and mental dimension. That's priority number one. In a doubles, the service is different because we have two players and we can say that, for example, if we are on area one and area two is uh, uh, in the middle and we can see an example, I can be on the left side or on the right side and it's not going to be the same. We have the uh, three, four, five and six as well. And a six is on the outer uh, part, and we're gonna see the different uh, styles or things that we can do depending on the uh, zone of the court that you are in. We're gonna talk about the third and fourth uh, stroke. Am I uh, chaining these for me or for my partner? And it depends how am I going to explore the uh, service zones? Here we have quality, precision, regularity, and variations. According to the stats, during the uh, during this period most uh, points are obtained within the first four uh, strokes so the question is where should i service and why and how would this benefit my partner we have a service in uh, area two a reverse uh, service this is also area two with a right hand uh, stroke And when we have a service in area two, which is on the right, then we're gonna see that there is a service to the uh, right side. And when we have a service more to the outer part, the a uh, response it's uh, crossed then we see right again and here's the crossed response this is also all crossed It's a little bit of a, a reverse uh, stroke. And here we have, or we can create the dynamic with uh, the partner. We need to try to find an automated way to work with your partner. Here we saw service to area four, and here this smash was uh, crossed. Here we see at 80%, four, and here it's across. It's much easier in 80% of the cases. And here we you can see how it goes to the center. there's uh, the intention to uh, do the movement with the a partner now we can see 
that this uh, service can be done um, by yourselves or with your partner. This is how we uh, work with the service and then I have the intention of uh, going somewhere. And we see that it, it's very dynamic with the footwork and the uh, racket work. And here we can see that the return is almost the same. I play and then I set myself up. Here we have the response and this is for the partner. This is uh, what I had to say for well, for the uh, specific elements of the mental and the dimension. Now we move on to uh, the knowledge of the tools. We need to ha uh, have confidence in ourselves. We need to handle uh, the stress. And we need to uh, move on from stress to uh, pleasure. We can also uh, work in a dissociated uh, way. This is where I work out of uh, the court. I can do the uh, trainings, the uh, debriefings. I can uh, discover all the tools that are available and this is going to do a briefing with the partner. We can also work on communication and the players need to know each other to see what can we expect inside the court. And we are also we're going to work on the exercise to improve the intentions within the game. They can interact, but we can also work on frustration, frustration management. It could, uh, we can have in injustice or uh, wind or any external condition and we need to mentally prepare for that. Now, a bit about physical preparation. We need to work... Uh, well, we have very... Uh, things that are very necessary for the physical preparation. For example, the dissociated uh, preparation, which is outside the court, and the uh, integrated uh, preparation, the work with the air racket and the shuttle. The uh, dissociated uh, preparation, we work on distance and timing, also on um, breathing. We always need to respect the uh, tactical uh, fundamentals and especially For example, here we are preparing the situations so we can have a better uh, tactics. We work in this regardless of the cycle. This is going to depend on how are we preparing ourselves. I know that the Federation has uh, work uh, a lot in the technical and technical uh, part, especially for athletes between 16 and 19. And here we can see the aero aerobic uh, part. 
we have the a cardiovascular uh, part with aerobic preparation. For us, this is really important. And also we need to develop uh, speed. And we also need to work on injury prevention with a special treatment and then the uh, analysis. And we used the uh, data systems for the analysis. Now we're going to see uh, what's specific for uh, doubles. We have a lot of repetitions working on the strength, on the uh, upper body strength. And we emphasize a repetition. Here we have the disassociated and physical preparation. We work on uh, the variables. This is in order to improve the speed and have a recovery time. If we reduce the recovery time, we can maximize the capabilities, the aerobic capabilities, because here we are really elevated and our athletes are not going to be able to reach their maximum. Here we have the uh, work with weights. And this is uh, interesting. Here we have other type of work. Here we have Here we prepare the muscles with uh, a weight lifting. And if we are not uh, prepared uh, with this, we're gonna have problems releasing the explosive uh, strength. Here we have the uh, work for back and shoulders. Now the alternance allows us to work not only on the uh, shoulders, but also on the back and the arms and fingers. And this takes us to the uh, integrated uh, physical preparation. This is a heavy uh, racket to improve the uh, classic tactical and technical abilities to work in, in this exchange. This is to show you how to work on intensity. We try to work on several things regarding uh, strength. Here uh, we work on a fixed position with maximum contraction. For example, here and they can uh, prepare and uh, working on interceptions. Here we have a faint uh, work. We have a work on uh, this is a static uh, work. This is a mix of sequence and dynamic work. Here we have a, a sequence that is done immediately. We can work in acceleration and then they go back to the back of the line and we do this 
as quickly as possible. We're doing here specific work for doubles. And here we have strength and preparation. This is a, a mid-level work. We do three to four strokes with the racket. This is a light work. It's very interesting in order to develop maximum strength. And here we have uh, several work. We uh, try to work on the intention. For example, we have a, a short a feint. And one is going to run and do the uh, stroke. We, with this, we work on the technique. And this is our approach uh, to the game. It's interesting because these enable us to do the transference to our real play situation. And this allows me to move on to one last notion, which is the development of the capabilities. We keep working on classic uh, routines with an intensity a bit higher than maximum. Here we can work on speed, very specifically. If we work with high intensity, we can uh, work on several uh, different qualities. I try to work uh, cardio, but if I'm working on a larger space, I work on intensity. We can do this with multiple shuttles. This means that with the same exercise or with different small exercise, I can uh, work uh, equally and we can incorporate several exercises in one. For example, we try to keep the shuttle here in a very well-known uh, dynamic. And to conclude, as I said it in the beginning, I'd like to talk about the specificities of these three disciplines. We can talk about women's doubles, which is different because the defense, well, I could say it's better than the offense, so we need to improve the displacement within the court. To have progress in order to create this adjustment. Now regarding, well, during a, a practical exercise that we do, we need to be able to adapt and to change. So we need to work on the in service in order to create a relationship between this work and the strength work. In the case of uh, mixed doubles, is very specific. It's uh, a lot about temporary uh, pressure, especially if we work with the uh, uh, smash. It's uh, about doing a small movements, a small uh, strikes. And for men, for men's doubles, it's all, almost identical to what we do in, in the court. But 
when we work on the return, we need to send every stroke to the back. To do this and naturally it's a bit odd, so we need to work a lot on this. In men's doubles, it's like when we saw, we saw the trend to go always into the offensive. So we're always going to uh, go forward and we're going to try to have a very powerful game to take advantage of our uh, rivals. In ex exercise we need to respect the situation. We try to adapt to the specificities of these uh, and disciplines and I think with that I conclude uh, my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm available. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas. We'll now move on to our question and answer section. Please, if you have any questions or comments you want to share, write them down in the chat box. Let's check the chat box. No questions as yet. All right, so Thomas, in your opinion, is there a French style of doubles play or is there something that different French styles of doubles than other countries? Maybe an Asian style, for example? It's a very good question. The French style that I've uh, shown, well, we try to create a priority according to the age in order to instruct our athletes and we try to respect the areas of play with a focus, well, we try to get involved in the organization in order to, to better develop the sport. Okay. Um, we have a comment here from Elio. He says, the intermittent method for physical preparation that gives so much importance. How, how, is it, how, how important is it for you? For me, physical preparation is uh, essential. Either in singles and doubles. I talk about specificity for doubles games for several reasons, because regarding uh, the strength or the power, for example, these would uh, give us an advantage because we can create a destabilization in our arrival. The aer aerobic part, it's going to allow us to train uh, with less uh, fatigue. The anaerobic resistance is going to allow us to recover uh, very quickly. The physical preparation as well, it includes to work on uh, speed and also working on uh, injury in prevention is really important. It's uh, really important for double schemes. How can we maintain these strong uh, strokes to the uh, shuttle without getting uh, injured? We've study a lot to do this specific work for and doubles we've worked on cardio routines we've worked on the aerobic part etc okay what do you think about the early specialization in doubles or mixed doubles do you is it something you encourage in your training Well, in uh, France, with the athletes that arrive at 16 or 17 uh, years old, they are uh, specialized. I think it's important 
it's important to develop a physically and also in and the a tactical part i think it's also important that in order to have a well-rounded by badminton player uh, he needs to be a double uh, doubles player he needs to know how to move uh, completely so i would uh, i would be in favor of specialization but having a complete understanding at least at, up until the end of the junior category okay now we've also heard that um they're thinking of changing the scoring system to 11 by 5 i think is the latest thing do you think that will affect how you train your doubles teams uh c'est à dire de changement de points If they were to change the scoring system, ah, okay, okay. do you think that, that would affect how you train your teams in terms of um, maybe the, the games would be sh shorter, so the rallies would be more intense? Yes, uh, it would change the same way that I would change to or reach a certain uh, amount of points. Well, we need to assess and these to see what can we do and what would be the uh, total uh, time of a match and based on that yes the, the trainings may be uh, different it may be uh, longer or with a higher intensity of course uh, this would change the the approach that we would give but we need to know this in advance. We can uh, imagine it, but we uh, are not sure how it's going to affect. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marie Theresa uh, asks, are the hidden codes used by athletes at a time of service really useful to predict an opponent's return? In our case, we uh, have certain goals. We we have a technical approach that can uh, help and to know this type of situation. They be emo they could be more comfortable with the service technique. If they are well adapted, we can continue with this service training, and we can have a deeper analysis of this and we can uh, try to identify if there is a problem or in which way we can solve it. Okay, muchas gracias. Espero que eso responda a la pregunta de María Teresa. Muy bien, hemos llegado al final del webinar de hoy. ¿Tienes algún comentario final para compartir con el público? I would hope that uh, you were able to follow what I uh, presented. I hope that these uh, fulfilled uh, your expectations and it's an honor uh, having been invited uh, to this webinar. and. being able to explain my work with uh, Okay, thank you very much, Thomas, for sharing such an interesting presentation with us. It's been very enriching talking to you and analyzing the different situations that occur. 
especially in doubles. Also, we invite you to check out BPAC's YouTube channel where you can see this and other conferences we've held. Before closing today's webinar, we greet all our audience that have accompanied us today and in a special way, Sebastian from Argentina, Maria Teresa from Chile, Randy from Costa Rica, Elia from Ecuador, Shirley, who is always here, and Rolando from Guatemala, Marlon and Akili from Guyana, Jorge and Claudio from Mexico, Alan and Cecilia from Peru, and from other continents, Igor from Benin and Belinger and Hari from Madagascar. Uh, we also have from Special Olympics, Gonzalo from Chile, Carlos and Melinica from Peru. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we thank you for your participation and hope that you enjoyed today's session. Stay well and stay safe.